My name is Steve Jaguer. I'm a solution architect at Aqua Security. So this video is in response to an email I got just the other day asking what is image scanning? And that's a pretty fundamental question. And I thought, oh, okay. Uh... Higher scanning speeds provide an increase in daily scanning on every part of the vault. This is how we all always... evenly lit bright room and hold your phone over the image taking care no, 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 none of those. But that is that is the confusion, isn't it? If you search for image scanning, you won't get anything near what it is. It's too generic of a phrase. And for people who understand container security, their experiences are largely based on open source tools like Claire or Trivi. And what you get from a larger enterprise solution is far beyond that. So I understand the confusion. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you on a tour through the results of an image scan through Aqua so that you can see all of what that actually means. It really does extend just scanning for vulnerabilities to a definition of trust. Here we go. So what is the difference between aqua scanning and an open source tool? That was the question that I got. And I can see why people would ask that because a lot of people have used open source scanners. They've seen the results and they're wondering, what am I getting from an enterprise scanner? Sure. Fair question. I mean, I'm starting here in the images panel from aqua and I can see lots of what look like vulnerability results across a variety of registries. So right away, what's nice about an enterprise scanner is that I can just plug in registries and I don't have to do anything. I don't have to manually scan. It just kind of takes care of the risk posture of all my images inside my registries. That, I guess that's a pretty obvious one. That's nice to have. Now, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to use an open source version. So Trivi is Aqua's open source tool. Uh, I can do dash H. I've got it installed. It's very easy to install. That's one of the real perks of Trivi. It's kind of developer friendly. And I could scan an image. So if I want to run a Trivi image, uh, let's say Alpine, that's, you know, that's a pretty solid. Let's do an older one though, shall we? 3.7. Now it's just going to pull the image, but once it's done that, the scan is actually really fast. And I can see that there's a fixed versions. I can see the, the, the CVE number. I can get a little bit of extra information on there and I got a summary across the top. This is really good if I'm designing an image and I just want to get a picture of the base images I'm going to use and what I might want to do in terms of a comparison. So this is fantastic for developers on the desktop to see what might happen if I build an image and I push it into my CI environment. This is great. Now, if this is what you understand, awesome. Keep using this stuff. But if I shift over a little bit more and we look at what can be done with a commercial scanner, it's quite different. Now, just from the start, and I've automated a commercial scanner. Now, if you want to see how our commercial scanner is installed, you can look at our, our help, Aqua Scanner Executable Binary, and it gives you some very easy steps. Doing a, performing a wget, giving it permissions, and simply running it. The parameters are slightly different, but really not that much. So I've just built, I have a Docker file. Let's take a look at my Docker file. Now I'm going to build that docker build dash T. Now what am I going to call it? My Nginx. I'm going to keep it real simple. Mine. And I'm going to tag it 0.9 because there's no way that's official. So we're going to build that out. It's going to build, I would imagine, pretty quick. It's just a very straightforward Nginx. And now I've scripted my scan so I can run a scan with my normal scanner that I've installed using those instructions. And I'm going to use my tag. So I've only just done that. So it's very similar to what I did with Trivi, except I'm using the Aqua scanner. And I can see it running through. And it doesn't take that much longer. And I can see there's a quite a comprehensive JSON output that I can export into a commercial you know, tool to try to weed through all of this. But let's zoom up and take a look at the, the options in here. We can see that I ran with scan, similar to Trivi's image. I'm running a Dockerless scan, which is which is interesting. It, it simply means that I don't need Docker present or a Docker socket to make the scan, which is actually very similar to Trivia as well. 
I've got my credentials. These aren't the real ones. I've obfuscated them, of course. And I'm referencing, referencing the host. So that's interesting. And that's kind of where the differences really come into play. The host is where my policies that define compliance and trust exist. And I could run this and produce an HTML output, and I'll show you what that looks like when I've integrated into my CI. But what's interesting at the moment is that if I echo my dollar question mark, I can see my last output was four, which means actually if this had been run in CI, that would have been non-compliant because it returned non-zero. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. If I just go up one directory and I run a scan ad hoc, we'll see the other mechanism we can use to run this. And that is using a Docker container. Now it's gonna do the same kind of thing, produce a nice JSON result, but the mechanism was just slightly different. And there's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other, depending on how I want to run my, my local or ad hoc scans. Oh, wow, there's a lot of vulnerabilities in this. Hmm, interesting. Finally, we got there, we got there. But we can see that I ran it as Docker and there's slightly different parameters. Now here's one of the key differences is mounting the Docker socket into our scanner container. Some people don't like doing that, but other people really like that the environment is all enclosed and you can, I can run this container anywhere I want. The usual build once run anywhere solution. So if you like the containerized version, great, use that. If you like the scanner CLI command line, Great, use that. They're very similar results. So what does this look like if I were to give you a prettier output? Well, what's kind of nice about this is that not only did I get results, but because I've integrated with the console, I can run to my images where I am and I can look at my CICD scans and I can see these ones that I've run recently. So let's look down here because these are the ones I just did. This is Orders Engine X2. I just did this. I can see the image is approved against my default policy, and I can look at the vulnerabilities if I want. So this is a nicer interface, isn't it? Also, I can take a look at the one that I just ran via my scanner CLI. That was tagged slightly differently. So let's take a look at mine 0 0.9. I can see this one is non-compliant, and there's an additional policy being applied to that. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I can see that I need to fix a few vulnerabilities that exceeded 9.8. And what's already interesting about that is I'd ran two different scans, but my definition of compliance was different and there were different policies applied depending on the environment. And that's another thing that you get different running image scanning via an enterprise tool. Now you're probably already looking across the top at all the other information that I have about this image. And that's the kind of the next step. But before we go there, I just wanted to show you what you can see via integrations with something like Jenkins. Now I started a build recently. Let's take a look at whether that's finished or not. And it is. And if I jump in here and I take a look at the artifact that was created via our plugin for Jenkins, I get kind of a nice, what's meant to be a developer friendly view. The same sort of Dockerized scan ran in this instance and we can see orders nginx has failed. It's non-compliant. I can see the different critical high, medium, and low vulnerabilities, and I can see that different image assurance policies have, have failed. One involving a CVE blacklist. Okay, that's interesting. That is unique. And a limit on severity as critical. Okay, so again, if we go back here and I take a look at a more of an overview on that one, and that is the one I just ran is here. And I can see that again, there are two policies that have been run, but the policy is a little bit different. This is a CI Jenkins policy. Okay, let's take a look at our pipeline. So I've just run a scan in my pipeline here. Now let's back out and just take a look at the latest and greatest. I mean, this may not be the greatest, latest. That's definitely the latest there. And if I look at the, this is via the Azure DevOps plugin. And I take a look at the scan report that I have here. And again, I can see I have critical, high, medium, low vulnerabilities. I can go through this and I can view them by resource. I can also check to see if I have sensitive data. Wow, and in this case I do, that's bad. We also check for malware and something called dynamic threat analysis, which we'll talk about in another video. That's a recent innovation that we've introduced in Aqua 5.0, but definitely deserves its own feature preview. 
I could ungroup these and take a look at the different vulnerabilities. But the idea is the same. I've got slightly different results. Now, if I take a look at this one, Azure Pipelines back in my CI CD scans, which I believe is here, we can see that I have yet a different policy applied alongside of my default to produce different actions required across that. So that's interesting. So we can see already that, sure, I've got vulnerabilities, but my, defin of de my definition of trust has changed depending on whether I was a developer running it on the command line, whether I was running it in Jenkins, maybe in an, a different cloud, and whether I was running in my Azure DevOps pipeline here. And again, that's something that is different about enterprise scanning. I'm allowed to scope my definition of compliance or trust depending on a variety of metadata that I have available to me. So let's go back over here and let's take a little tour through some of the results that we have up here. Now, what I'm going to do for that is you'll notice, by the way, you see the same results in CI CD scans as you do as the scans that come in via the registry. So I'm going to choose one that is here in the registry as an example. And we can see I've got Struts Attacker. Struts Attacker is actually pretty bad. It's based on uh, quite a few people created a, a vulnerable Java app called Struts Showcase. And you can see me using that in my drift prevention video. So we've analyzed this. It's passed because it only it's only being checked against the default policy because there is nothing specifically scoped to it. But let's take a look at the vulnerabilities and what you get in terms of what you can see by looking at just a vulnerability. So let's let's roll down and look at image magic, for example, as a starter. So this is a critical vulnerability. And the information I get via the enterprise version is that this has been marked at critical and I can see the reasons why. If I expand this, I can see that the different CVSS scores are available. I can see that there might not necessarily be a vendor score. And by the way, I can set within Aqua whether I want to take CVSS V3 or V2, whatever I like. This is a setting that's possible. I can luckily see that there isn't an, a live exploit available. And thankfully, I haven't got a workload running based on this because actually not only would this be bad, but the fact that this has the struts vulnerability somewhere in there is also be really quite terrible. If I look at the recommendations, I can see them in Gartner's workflow order, which is great because if I want to remediate it, I have the detail I need to make that happen. If I wanted to mitigate it, I can apply one of Aqua's V shields, which is a tailored runtime policy to render this particular vulnerability non-exploitable. Very cool, but something for another video. And finally, I can acknowledge it. There's a, a variety of options around acknowledgements based on the image, based on the repo, and a possibility to put a time limit on that. And the rest of the scan deals, details I might need to know to take action upon this. Now, all that's fine and good, but this is a lot to kind of eat all in one sitting, isn't it? What if there's a way that I could find out what's the, what I can do with this to create the, the largest effect? Well, there's other views available for, for vulnerabilities. I can look at it by layer and I can even get rid of the non-vulnerable layers and just take a look at where it is I feel I can apply the most uh, remediation all in once. Or I quite like the resources view. When I'm looking at my resources, I can instantly see in kind of order that if I just removed some of these resources from this, and do I need this? This is a, a Java web application. Why do I still have curl in it? This immediately shows the advantage of a lean base image and a lean image generally. Now, if I removed curl, Python, Perl, Git, do I need these? Mercurial, why is that even there? A lot of these I don't need. And I can, as part of my image design, let's say remove something. That's actually pretty rare for developers to do that. They tend to leave things bloated. Sorry, developers. But if I roll down a lot of the things I look at that I don't need, I can simply remove or I can apply the fix version if available. And just by doing the basics of what I see here, I can seriously trim down this vulnerability count. And I really like that. So moving for, further on, I can see sensitive data. Thankfully, there isn't any like I had in the, the scan that we saw up there. No malware. I can see the scan history, so I can see every time I've scanned it. And I can see if there's any additional audit information associated with this. So I can see the scan was, that happened, so that's that works just fine. 
But what I really like to and like to stop on is information. So this provides me with all of the metadata that I might be able to use down the line to further create policies that might scope what I'm trying to do a little bit better. Additionally, I can also think about other environment variables in terms of design, like do I want to expose things? Like let's let's just take for example, I have this key. I'm not entirely sure what it means, but do I want that that visible? Maybe I should be using a, a vault or a secrets manager to try and push this in instead of having it visible out of the box. But if I roll down, I can see all the different metadata that was used, environment variables, etc., on the way by layer. So this gives me a lot of information that I might want to use as part of my scope. And in fact, I did that. That's how I created all of my policies. If I very quickly jump over to my CICD scans and I take a look at one of them, let's choose the one that I scanned using. Yes, there it is. And I look at the information for that. I can see that there's a lot of Docker labels that Azure just adds automatically. And now if I introduce you to policies and we look at the assurance policies that I'm using at the moment, we can see the default policy. And we know that the Jenkins failed against the default policy because of this blacklisted vulnerability. Cool. This is kind of an, a brief intro to default policies. I'm not going to go through all of these controls right now. Again, that's something for a different video. They could take you know, a good half hour, but I just wanted to show you the way I've scoped all these. So the default policy will apply to everything. And that's why it's a little bit light. But if I back out and I look at the different policies, particularly that Azure one, well, I can see that based on the image label that defines the pipeline name, I can apply a specific scope with specific controls that are designed to suit the risk appetite of that pipeline. So I'm checking for a super user and a certain vulnerability uh, appetite as well. And I'm doing the same thing for my developer, which is the one that returned that for. So this has just been marked by an image label that says the build environment is dev, and that was in my Docker file. So I'm just looking for criticals because I'm really, I'm a developer and I just really want to remove the low hanging fruit. So it's a bit lighter. And then finally, I have my Jenkins pipeline that is again, based on image labels and metadata tailored to my Jenkins, looking for particular packages I really don't want to see or vulnerability severity. Again, I could have added other things like open source licenses, etc. cetera. Um, but it's worth noting that all of these, if more than one policy applies, then they kind of stack up. And we could see that in the results when we were looking back in my images. So going back to images, just to summarize, scanning for images is a lot more than just looking for vulnerabilities. It's about defining what is compliant and scoping that definition of compliance and trust across different environments or different image metadata. Now this speaks to image metadata design. So to make sure that we are adding the right data to our images so that we can apply the right policies to the right scope. Additionally, we it's worth knowing that we look for things that extend beyond scanning. In this particular case, malware, and earlier we saw the example of sensitive data. So it's worth knowing that we're getting an awful lot more than just vulnerabilities when we're talking about image scanning in Aqua. Okay, so if you found that to be a bit of a whirlwind, so did I. When I set out to do this video, I thought it would actually be about five minutes. It wouldn't take that much. And then I really started getting my head around all the different data elements, the different types of policies, the way you could scope them. And when I took into account open source and how you could really shift scanning left, I thought I had to include that, didn't I? And it was also the reference point for the original email. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned something and I hope because I've recorded it, you can go back and watch it again if some of it kind of blew by a bit quick. But to reiterate, if we're talking about image scanning on an enterprise scale, well, we can start with our reference point of open source. And I totally recommend that developers do that because you can get all that low hanging fruit, really try to eliminate some real severe and critical vulnerabilities early. But when we're talking about CI scanning or optionally also desktop scanning in Linux, we can use the commercial scanner and we can start to scope what my organization defines as trusted and compliant. And we can even start thinking about the image metadata that we start to use so that we can start creating policies that make sense and are infinitely more scopable within Aqua. That's really cool. 
We also saw that there's integrations into different CI pipelines. Jenkins and Azure DevOps are certainly two of the most popular, but obviously other CI tools are available. And if you saw how easy it was when I did the command line scan with Scanner CLI, and of course with the containerized scanner I ran via Docker, you can kind of integrate scans into anything, really. Any kind of CI environment, it's pretty trivial. What's cool about the kind of full integration throughout Aqua as it watches the images as they become containers, as they move through their life cycle, is that you have visibility in one spot. So I could see the scans that happened in CI. I could see if it moved into a registry, I knew Aqua was scanning it there, and was also verifying that it was in fact the same image. Additionally, when it became a workload, I could see if we looked at that information, when we looked at a particular vulnerability that was in an image, it actually told me whether I had a running workload with that vulnerability. So kind of an indicator that ah, Aqua is drawing a line even between scans that happen way back in a developer desktop using scanner CLI or whether they happen in CI or whether they happen from the registry where those images are at rest. Aqua is keeping track of the entire life cycle of that image and all that extra and amazing scan data, including malware, including sensitive data, and all of that additional metadata that's there all in one place to really get a really good picture of my risk posture, but also just all of the images that are in my inventory in a way that I had never quite seen before. Okay, so that's the difference. I hope that was clear, particularly to the person who sent me the original email asking me the difference between open source scanning and enterprise scanning. And if you enjoyed that, there's lots of other videos available and a lot more coming. Thanks. I'm Steve Jaguer, Solution Architect with Aqua. Thanks for watching.